That's her butt. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Lou. Welcome back to my channel. Today isn't going to be a spooky video per se, but one that I have been meaning to film for a very long time now. I realize that a lot of people come to my channel to learn about White's tree frogs, which is fair. I do have a lot of White's tree frogs and I have been posting videos about their care and whatnot. Under those videos, I get a lot of questions. I thought today I would answer the most frequently asked questions I have seen about White's tree frogs in my comments. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. There is quite a few of them and I want to make sure that I have the time to properly answer them for you guys. And at the end of the video, if you still have more questions or if you have anything to add, feel free to leave that down below in the comments. The question I see both in my YouTube comments and my Instagram comments is, do you have to have more than one tree frog? And this one's a little bit tough to answer because technically, yes, you could just have your one white tree frog and they could live a happy and healthy life. But from my own experience and also other frog keepers I have talked to, I find that they do better in a group of two to three or they could even be in a larger group. And the reason why I think they do better in groups is because I've noticed huge behavioral changes when they are with a group rather than when they are alone. When they're alone, yes, they still act like a frog. Yes, they still hunt. They still move around and they're still active, but I definitely see a lot more activity when they're in a group and I see a lot more froggy behaviors. So the short answer is yes, you can keep them alone, but from personal experience and talking to other frog keepers, I would recommend having having a group of two to three, or again, you can go larger, just depending on the size of your cage. Speaking of the size of your cage, that is another question I get so much. A lot of the questions go along the lines of, is a 10 gallon big enough? Is a 12 by 12 by 18 big enough? Should I get an 18 by 18 by 18? A lot of questions about sizing. So I would say the absolute bare minimum for one to three frogs would be an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra. Typically you want to add 10 or so gallons per frog. So if you were going to add more than three frogs, I would definitely recommend getting a larger tank. A 12 by 12 by 18 or a 10 gallon can really work great for if you have a baby or a juvenile and you are you hear noises, they are collecting garbage outside. However, when they get larger, they really do require more space. So I would recommend a minimum of a 20 gallon and then I would add five to 10 gallons per frog. Of course, that's just my opinion and bigger is better for them. They definitely move around a lot. Some of the other questions I see a lot of have to do with Eating, which is an important part of their care. So I definitely wanted to touch on that today. The first question I see a lot is, do you have to feed them live insects or can you feed them dried insects? And unfortunately you are going to have to feed them live insects. Dried insects just do not have the same nutritional value as your live insects. And plus with your live insects, you can make sure that you're gut loading them beforehand, which is really important when it comes to reptiles and amphibians or any creature really that is eating insects. And by gut loading, I mean you are feeding them before you feed them to your frog, if that makes sense. It's super easy. I typically like to feed them veggie scraps and that could just be veggie scraps from when you're cooking dinner or for me, for example, if I make a little bit extra of puff salad, puff is my bearded dragon. If I make her a little bit extra salad and I know she's not gonna eat that much, I like to toss it into my feeder bins. The next question I get a lot in regards to feeding, which honestly I think maybe I should be doing a whole feeding video so you guys can kind of see the process. But the next question I get a lot is, how much are you really supposed to be feeding your frog? So this answer kind of depends on the age of your frog. For juveniles and babies, I would 
probably say every day is your safest bet. In fact, you definitely should be feeding little tiny ones every single day as much as they can eat in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, every frog is gonna be different on how much they eat, but they need that nutrition to grow nice and big. When it comes to the adults, you're definitely going to be feeding them less than you would be feeding a baby. They just don't need as much food. What I like to do is I like to feed them every two to three days. So for example, if I feed them on Monday, the next time I would feed them would be Wednesday. I might even push it to Thursday depending on how much they ate on Monday. But yeah, pretty much every second day I will offer them some food. With that comes the question of how much am I feeding them and it's really hard to say because Typically, you want to feed them however much they can eat in 10 to 15 minutes. And it changes for me every single time I feed them. Some nights, pesto will eat maybe four or five crickets, maybe six. And relish will eat around the same amount. But then maybe the next time, they'll only eat three. It really depends on how they're feeling that night. I can't really give you an exact number. So the next section I kind of want to talk about is cleaning their enclosures. So the first question is how often should you be cleaning their cage? I like to clean their enclosures every three-ish days. That might sound like overkill, but right now all of my White's Tree Frogs are on paper towel and they pee just they, they pee a lot and they poop a lot and they just make a big mess all of the time. So I like to say around every third day I'll change the paper towel and then once a week is when you want to do your big clean. So that would include wiping everything down with a cleaning solution, making sure that you are cleaning their decorations, putting down new paper towel, cleaning out their water dish, which really you should be cleaning their water dish every single day, and just all of that good stuff. So I would say every second to third day I am removing the paper towel and putting in fresh ones, and then once a week I'm definitely doing a large clean. This will be completely different if you have a bioactive enclosure. That doesn't really Really require all that much cleaning. I kind of just like to clean the sides if there's dirt on there but for the most part the cleanup crew in there is doing all the cleaning for me which is kind of why I prefer bioactive enclosures. Another question I get a lot about cleaning is where do I put my frogs when I'm cleaning their enclosures which is totally fair because <laughs> frogs tend to jump around and could escape quite easily. So when I'm doing my paper towel change or just doing like a very simple clean where I'm just kind of wiping down the bottom and all of that, I actually keep them in their cage. I have a soap dish near the top where they like to hang out. So I'll just pop them up there, do my clean, and then they can come back down whenever I'm done. But when I'm doing my big cage clean, it's kind of impossible to keep them in there, especially when I'm working with something like a vinegar water solution. I don't really want them to get into that if that makes sense. They soak up all of the moisture through their skin so I don't really want them to be soaking up vinegar if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's when I put them in their little travel carrier. Best way to describe that is I take a either like a plastic storage bin or a Tupperware container or anything like that and I poke some holes in there and then that's where they'll stay just on a piece of paper towel that is a little bit damp and that just makes sure that they're super secure. There's a lid on there so they can't get out and I can see them. So this kind of goes along with the cleaning but another question I have gotten is can they jump out when you're trying to replace their water or you're opening up the cage to feed them. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a yes for that. It really depends on your frog. Some frogs would rather just stay in their cage, but others are escape artists for sure. I know if my Cuban tree frog is a little bit too close to the doors, I'll wait until he moves because he will for sure take any exit point he can to try to get out of his enclosure. My white stir frogs aren't too too bad, um, but definitely keep an eye on them if you are going to be going in and out of your enclosures and especially if they're not really good with being handled. Fast reflexes are something you definitely acquire after you've owned white street frogs for a while. 
Another question I get a lot, not even just online, but in person is, are they really stinky? And this is kind of like one of those questions where they aren't really stinky themselves, but their enclosure can get stinky, if you know what I'm saying, which is why it's really important to stay on top of cleaning. Another one of my most commonly asked questions is, are they loud? And it kind of depends on the frog. I can't say every single white tree frog is going to be loud, and it definitely depends on their sex as well. Males do tend to be quite a bit louder than females. It's a hard question to answer because mine are really loud, and I've heard of people having a white tree frog that never croaks in its life, but I would say it's equivalent to a dog bark, which sounds crazy. You wouldn't think they could make that loud of a noise, but Pesto, he's a lot. I'll see if I can find any videos of them croaking and I can put it in here so you guys can kind of get a better idea if they're loud or not. I would be prepared for croaking because you don't want to buy an animal and just kind of hope it's going to be quiet. Kind of just be prepared that it will be a little bit louder. It's not necessarily something that'll wake me up in the middle of the night, but they are quite loud. And a lot of that kind of depends on, again, the sex of the frog. I know that Pesto really doesn't like any sort of loud noise or to be woken up during the day. So if I'm vacuuming or I'm moving things around and it's just a little bit too loud for him, he'll croak. And then sort of early evening is when he'll start croaking as well, just to like let everyone know that it's time for food and probably looking for a mate to be completely honest but it's not something that's happening for hours on end if you know what I'm saying like it usually lasts only about 30 seconds to like a minute and then he's good if my camera is shaking yeah it's because my dogs <laughs> are on my bed and I've kind of just balanced you guys on like my record player a couple of textbooks my wallet and like a candle. <laughs> I did not really want to bring my tripod in here. So um, this is gonna happen. <laughs> Thumper, what you doing? Thumper, you're in the way. Go sit down, go lay down. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. We're just gonna wait for Java to stop being upset. The last thing I want to touch on is something that I have completely changed my mind about, <laughs> which I mean, it's for the better that I changed my mind about it, and that has to do with lighting. This is a question that I got a lot in the past, and I still get every single day. I feel like there's at least one person in my life asking me about lighting for frog. And before, I would definitely say, you know, it's kind of a personal choice whether or not you want to have UVB for your frogs. I'm leaning towards you should have UVB for your frogs. I've both kept frogs without UVB and with UVB and I haven't noticed any like health issues difference in it but I have noticed now that they do have their UVB they actually do like to soak in it a little bit and then on top of that they've just been so much more active which has just made me really happy they were always active frogs but since I added the UVB they just seem to be a lot more perkier <laughs> if that makes sense like they are really just truly living their best life. Animals definitely need UVB, humans included, for healthy bone development, so I definitely think it's an added bonus for that. I think I'm leaning towards, yes, you should consider looking into UVB for your frogs, but then again, that's something that I would encourage you to further research because the frog community I have found is quite divided on this. Some people say that it's not beneficial and it's actually causing them a lot of stress. Others say you absolutely need it. So this is something both myself and you guys should research a little bit more 
work. From what I've noticed though, the frogs that do have the UVB are much more active than my frogs that don't have UVB. So that kind of says something about that. But that is pretty much all the questions I really wanted to go ahead and answer for you guys. And I'm glad we got through it. And I hope this wasn't boring at all because I know that I can get a little bit rambly, but I really wanted to answer these questions because I keep getting them over and over and over again. Again, if you have any more questions or wanna see a video like this again in the future, please feel free to leave them down below and I can make a part two. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so you can get updates on when I post my next video. If you wanna keep updated with my life as well as all of my pets, all of my social media is linked down below and I will see you guys next time for another video. Ha <laughs> ha